Well, keep an eye out on one stock, really. Uh, that should be up for you on the screen. Uh, Dilip Bilkon, the stock was seeing selling pressure, and it's, now it's moved to the low point of the day. Our ticker team as well was alerting you. That's down close to around 13%. Wondering what's going on there. But that one from the word go was seeing selling. Now volumes are picking up, and it's moved to the low point of the day. So keep an eye out on that one. But on to some big earnings then to watch out for today. Big boy, Reliance Industries is set to report its numbers. Sona is with us to run us through the key expectations. Sona, over to you. Well, it is expected to be a steady quarter this time around. More of the same, really. Remember last quarter, the pet chem business hit a record high, the EBIT, that is. We're expecting the pet chem business strength to continue. Um, the refining business slowdown could continue. The gross refining margins have fallen a tad bit this time around to $10.2 a barrel versus $10.5 a barrel last quarter. Uh, and both the telecom as well as the retail business is expected to continue with its growth. Now, just to give you the key numbers, on the net profits, we're expecting a 2 3% quarter on quarter jump to come in at 9710 odd crores. Revenues are immaterial for an oil and gas company, but nevertheless, we're expecting a revenue growth of 7% quarter on quarter at 1.38 lakh crores. Now, the key numbers to watch are the Petchem and the refining EBIT, along with the telecom and uh, retail EBIT as well. On the Petchem EBIT, like I said last quarter, it, hit, it had hit a record high. We are expecting the EBIT to rise further by 8% quarter on quarter to come in at 8490 odd crores. Refining could see a bit of a downtake, so the EBIT could fall about 1% quarter on quarter. The retail business has been growing at a scorching pace. We're expecting that pace to continue. So, um, Nomura, for example, is forecasting the retail revenues to go up by 5% sequentially and the EBIT to rise by almost about 10.5%. And Rel Geo as well, subscriber additions will increase, so we're expecting a revenue growth of around 12.5%. Now, just to give you a couple of more details on the Petchem business, uh, you know, the Petchem volumes have been rising at a very steady pace. This time around as well, we are expecting about 9.3 MMT, which is a growth of 1% sequentially. Um, and the recent strength in the PX and PTA segment will aid earnings and the rupee weakness will also add to the core energy business. On the gross refining margins, the key number to watch is the $10.2 per barrel is what we are expecting. That's a fall from $10.5 a barrel last quarter driven by the FCC shutdown. Remember, in Q1, the gross refining margins had fallen to the lowest since Q2 of FY17 and we are expecting further pressure there. Okay, thanks so much for that, uh, Sonia. Well, Reema, tell us what can we expect from Reliance Geo? Well, it should be a good quarter for Reliance Geo at a time when it appears like Bharti Vodafone Idea could actually report a fairly weak quarter. The key driver for Reliance Geo is going to be the strong subscriber growth. So 12.5% revenue growth. Margins will improve by 40 to 50 basis points to be above 39%. And that will drive a 24% sequential improvement in the company's profitability. The key number to watch will be the subscriber growth as well as the ARPU number. So first on the subscriber number, we're expecting the total subscriber base to improve uh, by to increase by 14 to 15 percent which means the net subscriber addition will be about 30 to 32 million dollars higher than the 28 million dollar that we saw this is the subscriber base we're now talking about the net subscriber addition that's 247 minus 215.3 which is about uh, you know 30 32 million dollars so that number that net subscriber addition has been improving quarter after quarter and this quarter it will be aided by um, you know by uh, f uh, you know, the monsoon hangama offering or the launch of the geophone too. So all that will give traction to that. ARPUs, on the other hand, will slow down on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, lower by 25 to 3%. And the key reason for that could be the possibility that in the prior quarter, you had the FIFA World Cup, plus you had that IPL cricket match. So as a result of that, there were a lot of data top-ups which may not be there this time around, which is why that ARPU number could slow down. But net-net, uh, a good quarter. Uh, and the key driver will be the subscriber growth. So watch out for that number. And, oh. of course, do remember to catch uh, the comprehensive coverage of Reliance's Q2 earnings 4 p.m. onwards today on CNBC TV 18. Well, another aspect to watch out for today is that uh, Reliance may buy a 50% stake in DEN as well as Cable. Sources have told CNBC TV team that Reliance Industries is planning to buy the controlling stake in these companies. The announcement 
could be expected by today itself. Nisha Podar has been on top of that. Nisha, run us through those details. Yeah, thanks for that, Nigel. Of course, uh, this will be a big announcement that is expected today from Reliance Industries in order to really beef up their Reliance Geo's soon to be launched commercial broadband services. So this uh, particular acquisition of Den Networks as well as Hathaway Cable will give access to 20 million subscribers for video to home as well as also broadband services. Now, looking at the overall structure of uh, this transaction, there could be an initial stake buy through fresh equity issuance, uh, which could be controlling stake in nature. So over 50% stake buy out in both these companies, which will trigger an open offer. So net-net, um, they could land up owning over 70% stake in both these companies. Uh, there's unlike, it's unlikely that there'll be a premium to the current market price, considering that the cable TV business is really looking at a consolidation, and this has been the need of the hour, and Reliance Geo could be uh, really working as a consolidator. As far as impact is concerned, subsi subscriber base as well as last-mile connectivity would be two very important aspects here for Reliance Geo. In terms of this particular acquisition, the right of way that both uh, Den as well as Hathaway really present will help it in its last mile connectivity. But on the other hand, also remember that their technology, Den and Hathaway, is far um, you know, older than what uh, Reliance Geo is working with, that is fiber. So it has to be gradual in terms of its footprint because they'll have to upgrade and change the technology as well. But whether or not they can really push the integrated service offerings for a higher broadband play needs to be seen. And that's what the intent will be going forward. Net net, it will really turn off the heat on the competitors like Airtel, Dish TV, as well as Tata Sky. Okay, thank you very much for that. KRBL should be on your radar. That stock has plummeted 8% as we speak. The auditor SSAY and Associates have resigned. Walker Chandiok will act as the auditor from here on. It's not necessarily always a bad uh, thing when an auditor resigns. It could be for genuine reasons, mm. but it's just that the memory of the way stocks like um, with the stocks like Manpasand as well as Vakrangi uh, collapsed when their auditor resigned. And then later you had news that how MCA is going to probe the accounts of uh, Vakrangi's books, etc. So that memory of that is still fresh, which is why uh, that, you know, good, you know, bad, genuine or not, uh, yes. you know, the stocks get uh, get hit quite hard when there is some news. I think we're getting Anup uh, Gupta, the joint MD of KRBL. Uh, Mr. Gupta, if you could explain the reason for your auditor to resign and had they raised any red flags in the accounts? Good morning. There is no morning. question of any red flag. It was actually four months back, a lot of investors had a complaint that you must change your auditors. So immediately in the annual general meeting and the board meeting, we decided Walker Chandok and company as our statutory auditor. Mm. So when Walker Chandok has joined, there's no need of second auditor, so they resigned themselves. They said when Walker Chandok is there, we are not... Uh, we won't be working as a joint auditor. We said, okay, to resign. Okay, all right. So, Mr. Gupta, what you're clarifying to us here on CNBC yeah. TV 18, that there were no red flags that were raised, but uh, there was a genuine change in auditor that you all, had, you all were looking at, and that's come about, correct? Exactly, 100%. Okay. You said many of your investors had raised complaints about your prior auditor, SSA Associates. If you could no. tell us, what were the complaints? Complaint? No, they were saying the credibility of the auditor is not there. There was okay. no complaint. It is only the question of credibility of the auditor. They say Walker Chandok has a much greater credibility in the market. Okay. All right. Uh, so, that, so that's uh, the reason then. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, so post that clarification, I think we should just pull up the stock uh, post Mr. Gupta clarifying here on CNBC TV 18 that they were looking at changing the auditor and that's why there was no sense in keeping two auditors and that's why the stock, I think, has recovered a goodish bit from the low point uh, of the day. So how is business otherwise on the whole, if you could give us a sense of how business is shaping up? Yeah, business is good. Now the crop has started coming, new mm -hmm. harvest, mm -hmm. and the market is quite high. Mm -hmm. But since KRBL is holding a lot of old inventory, it will get a benefit. Okay. How long were SSA and Associates auditing the firm? They were auditor for last one and a half year only, madam. Okay, only in one and a half year. And on yeah. what basis had you selected them, sir? No, they were uh, they were they, they were working in the market. Uh, okay. Our finance team had selected them. Okay. All right.
We leave it to that, Mr. Gupta. Thanks so much uh, for uh, joining in. Uh, no red flags. Uh, the investors wanted, a, you know, a, an auditor with a better name, more credible, uh, more credibility in the market, which is why Walker and Chandyok was uh, selected by them. We'll uh, get in a few technical trading ideas. Then I believe we have Ashwini Gujral and Sandeep Vagle with us on the show. Ashwini, given up all our gains, flat on the benchmark indices, mid caps down 150 points now. Uh, what have you made of the day so far? Uh, what it seems is that you know a new can of worms is opening on housing finance and NBFCs. So uh, that way, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, a fresh leg of downside opens up out there. But overall, uh, we went up to the 200-day moving average, and from there, we've seen a bit of a correction. Uh, my sense would be that we could turn sideways uh, within a range of 10,500, 10,750. Similarly, you know, Bank Nifty possibly 25,400, 450 to about uh, 25,750, 800. So uh, the market looks like it's now turning sideways after a bit of a rally. Having said that, uh, stray in price is a sell with a stop of 34, target of 28. Uh, LNT Finance is a sell with a stop of 130, target of 122. Mm -hmm. And Wipro is a buy with a stop of 320, target of 335. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks so much for that, uh, Ashwini. Well, uh, keep an eye out on a couple of these financial names. You're seeing selling pressure. Axis Bank should come up for you. That stock has suddenly moved lower. So let's get the intraday chart uh, going for you of Axis Bank, Bajaj Finance, as well as Bajaj FinServe. All those three stocks have suddenly moved to the low point of the day. So some of these financials and banking stocks, they're getting a sharp knock in the last few minutes, moving to the low point of the day. And the Nifty Bank was doing a relative outperformance just a couple of hours back. Now that's, uh, you know, just managing to hold on into the green. In fact, it's on the verge of moving into the red. Uh, let's go across to Sandeep Bagley. Sandeep, what's your take on the Nifty? What's the trade out there? And also, what's your picks for today? Afternoon, Nigel. I think it is only the housing finance stocks that are looking weak. Otherwise, I don't have a bearish view on the Nifty. I think Nifty will find support, say, 20, 30 points lower. And I still feel there will, there will be an upside towards 10,700 or so. Stock specific, I have a buy in Adani Enterprises, stop loss of 159, target of 169. And a sell in a DHFL, stop loss 252, target 234. By the way, keep your eye on names like a Pedilite, a Marico, a Page Industry. So these consumption stocks, once again, are coming in for some amount of selling pressure. Anyway, these stocks have lost close to about 20% um, from its peak levels. And now, as you can see, they've started sliding. I guess it's that concern again that when the growth at NBFCs will slow down, it's going to hit the consumption stocks because that NBFC lending was also driving uh, the big growth at these um, stocks, partly at least. Um, so there is some um, sell-off that you can see in these names. Ashwini, any thoughts on Pedilite or Marico? Well, again, uh, uh, you know, there are several reasons. A lot of the reason is valuation compression because rates, etc., are going up. But, you know, these stocks will uh, remain safer than the rest. Overall, I would still think, uh, you know, buying Pedilite, etc., the safer stocks. Uh, with a recent low stop, 890-900, is still not such a bad idea. And, uh, you know, once the market sentiment recovers, most of these stocks uh, will recover first because they are not as inflation sensitive and, you know, they have a few less problems than NBFCs and financials. So still buy on decline on the stock. Okay. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining in. Before we slip into a break, here is something big to watch out for. The countdown begins for CNBC TV 18's India Business Leader Awards. The most coveted business awards are back with their 14th edition. The flagship event will honor the visionaries behind the outstanding businesses. The jury round will be held this afternoon, chaired by Uday Kota, Karsh Mariwala, the chairman of Marico, one of India's biggest consumer product companies, is our imminent jury member today. Watch him in action with other business leaders at IBLA Jury starting 2 p.m. only on CNBC TV 18.